the show that's three dimensions away from Terrifier 3 being called A Terrifier Christmas. I'm your host 3D Jake and today we're looking at Terrifier 3 released in 2024. Terrifier 3 is written and directed once again by Damien Leone and once again stars Laura Larry, David Howard Thornton, Elliot Furman, and Samantha Scafidi. This time around, Andatella Rose and Margaret Ann Force and Bryce Johnson join them into the cast. The movie essentially is picks up after the events of Terrifier 2, where basically five years later, like, you know, it picks up, like, well, the first five minutes uh, is, like a, uh, is like a scene that's just basically for fun. And then the next movie, where it shows you where at the end of the movie, what happens in the post credit scene. And then we get a time jump five years later where, you know, Sienna is now at a mental hospital and she's trying to recoup with her life. And, you know, she, after her brother helped defended her in court, by, you know, saying she's not insane, she just had a traumatic experience. So, of course, she, after she gets out of mental hospital and everything, she goes to stay with her aunt and while her brother's in college. And then, you know, as she starts to put her pieces of her life back together, well, apparently Art the Clown comes back into her life to terrorize her more. I really enjoyed this movie, man. Like, I I knew I would talk shit about the first movie. and But Mia, if you've seen the review for the second movie... We really, me and the, my friends, we really like the second movie. The third movie, I just think it is the best in the series. Like, I would say, like, if this movie kind of falls similar to the Friday the 13th franchise, where the first one was the weakest, and then the second one was really good, and the third one was, like, the best out of the three, I would say it's going the Friday the 13th route a bit, you know, where it's, like, it's just getting better as it goes on. And I wouldn't be shocked if four, the final chapter, will be, like, you know, really just even better. And then, of course... You know, they'll probably reboot it in five, <laughs> which would be really crazy if they did like a new beginning, but like with like someone else dressing up Arthur Clown going on a killing spree, and then like David Howard Thornton is still Arthur Clown. You know, this, yeah, I mean that would be fun. I would actually watch that. It'd be fun. I mean, it'd be probably people would hate it, but it'd be fun to watch. Um, uh, you know, I really enjoy the second Terrifier movie a lot and everything, and you know, and I think I'm glad that Laura Lurie come back because you know her and her brother like. You know, I was glad that they, you know, because the first one, they just kill off all the people except for Samantha Scafrida's character. Uh, and, you know, in this one, she has an important role. In the first, second one, she was just a cameo, but in this one, she has an important role. And this one, she's basically the demon, little pale girl, where she's possess, like, the possessed the victim from the first one. And now they're, her and Art are working together, and basically the whole entire third act is essentially, you know, her, her and Art's causing terror. To this like poor family, you know, I know a lot of people said that oh they were throwing up and the first ten minutes are shocking. The first ten minutes, by the way, spoilers. The first ten minutes is not shocking. It's just literally Art the Clown killing people off screen. Now he does kill the mom and the husband. He kills the you know the parents. If you know you see that fully, but like the kids are killed off screen and the kid one kid you know you do see his body you know which i thought was messed up i mean i was kind of like shocked at first like oh damn they showed the dead body but like you know but like he doesn't kill the little girl which if you've seen the teaser where the little girl's like santa and he like holds the axe because <laughs> you know like that that is a fake trailer that was shot because i'm like that's not the same little girl and also that is not the same but i mean it was a promotional trailer to hype up terrifier 4 because i'm like they shot a teaser of the trailer and they didn't even start shooting the movie until, like, the following year. And so, basically, like, they shot this thing in February. So I was like, oh, okay, so I know what happened. Like, they literally, it was kind of like what they did with Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, where, like, they literally showed a fake trailer in the, to, to hype up the movie, which is great, because, I mean, at least we know, like, oh, that's so cool that we it's going to be a Christmas movie. Because, I mean, this movie is so good. Like, I'm not even mad. Like, this works as a Christmas movie. Like, you could watch this in Halloween, or you could watch this around Christmas time. Like, if you're in, like, me, like, you like, if you like Silent Night, Deadly Night, or if you like Black Christmas, this is for you. Like, this is, I mean, you could, like, do a trilogy. You could watch Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. Then you could do Black Christmas. Then you could do this movie. I mean, it is literally, there's even homage to Black Christmas in this movie, like, where Arthur Clown is just sitting in the chair looking out the, you know, basement window. That is literally a homage to Black Christmas. And I'm like, oh, I like that nod. And the movie literally, like, you know, has, like, Christmas music in it. You have, like, the Santa, like, you know, like, you, you know, the mall scene. There was a, some moments that I just loved. Like, I was like, you know, and 
I loved like the mall scene with Santa where he's just like like he just drops some fr- like a bag a sleigh bag and then there's just presents and the kids just like just like like animals just jumping around getting like all the presents pulling all the presents out until they were like the elves just shocked to see because like that's not our Santa and then like the security escorts start to clown out and then like one kid gets a present and then it's a fucking bomb and opens it up and it blows up and I was just like. I would, I just started laughing. I was just shocked at how funny. I just started like, because it was like, this is the second Christmas movie to have a bomb. Someone get a present, and it's a bomb, and then they open it up, and it explodes. One of those movies that I'm talking about is a comedy for a family that starts Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad. I'm just saying, so that made me laugh that it was like, this is the second movie to do this. Only this one ends in a much horrific note compared to the first one, which I was just laughing because I'm like, there is a, literally, this is the second movie. Like, Jingle All the Way did this first, and then, like, this is the second movie where they open it up and there's a bomb. I mean, to be fair, there is another Christmas movie with a bomb in it, Die Hard. I mean, if you count that as a Christmas movie. But, I mean, like, really, like, seriously, it's like, man, what is it with, like, I was like, you could tell he was a big Jingle All the Way fan. He's like, I wonder if I put a bomb in this movie, how fucked up it'd be if it went off and a child opens. Like, I mean, it doesn't show a child getting blown up and, like, children walk around, like, crawling on the floor going, Ugh. No, it's just, like, you just see, like, blows up, and then you just, like, it, which, apparently, from what I read, it was actually, the whole, like, they, the, like, the, it, they literally stopped shooting after the child opened the box, and then they went and shot, like, the explosion in, a, in like, a, con- in a contained area. And then they just threw some guts everywhere and stuff to make it seem like the children blew up. And which, I don't know, I feel like the sick fuck in me was just laughing because I'm like, they just blew a child up in a bomb. Which I'm like, to be fair, Arthur Clown didn't kill them. They He did not give them the bomb. Like, he literally sat asleep back there. It's their fault for digging through the bomb. If he would have handed it to them directly, then I would say, okay, he killed them. But literally, he handed the slave bag there. Which, I'm sure he didn't go buy those presents. I'm sure, literally, he probably killed the Santa before. There's a scene where he goes and meets up with a guy at Santa Claus, dressed like Santa Claus at a bar and kills with liquid nitrogen. Like, I'm sure he took that sleigh bag, and I'm sure he probably made the bomb. Or it could have just been a disgruntled a postal man, like in, the, like in Jingle All the Way. And, like, literally, he just bought But I'm pretty sure that he put the bomb in there. But, I mean, still, the, the fact that they were digging through the bag and just went off, like, just, that was crazy. That shit is crazy. Like, you know, like, there are some things I do like. Like, I do like that, um, you know, like, how the movie's spread out. You know, I like how the movie is spread out. Like, it's not just kill every five seconds. Like, I know in the first Terrifier, it was just, there, I, there was a lot of issues. And also, it felt like the kills weren't really, like, when there was kills there, it was fun. But then it was just like, eh. But then when the second one, it felt like there was kills almost every ten minutes, you know. It didn't like let the story grow out. It just felt like they were focused solely on the kills. While in the third one, it feels like it feels like a story that stretched out. Like you'll get a kill, a nice one, then you'll get a great story, and then you'll get a kill over here, like a traditional slasher film. And I really enjoy that. Like honestly, the only thing is sometimes the moment the movie when you know you see Sienna with her aunt and uncle and all them, it sometimes feels like a lifetime movie or a Hallmark movie, Christmas movie. But then it turned it does not become that in the third act, trust me. Like, there are some gruesome shit. Like, there is a kill that involves rats and a pipe that I'm just, like, gross. It, it, like, it could be a saw trap. That's how fucked up it is. And then, like, and there's a sa- shower scene where a guy gets his ass and balls uh, cut like a deer. Like, in the first one, how a girl gets cut like a deer with a saw. This dude gets cut with a chainsaw like a deer. Like, you know, ass up. And I'm like, and then he turns and he gets his balls and his penis and everything. And I'm like, damn, that hurt me even. You know, and it's kind of like a homage to Psycho, but like on a stream level. You know, and I'm like, it is great though. I mean, really. And I really enjoy like how this girl's just so obsessed with Arthur Clown. Like, she's just like, she runs a true crime podcast. And she's so obsessed with Arthur Clown. And then she like, Arthur Clown hears her and she goes, so he's like Jack the Ripper. He's like, oh no, I'm not. Like, he's like, she's like, oh you're... And then she's like, I would like to meet him. So the clown takes her up on that and kills her and mutilates her and then gives her his shades for being a fan. <laughs> you know, I thought that was so great. I mean, it was really, I mean, you know, which that kill at the beginning is more just like, you know, it is something that they were just doing for fun, which is still messed up. I mean, and I do enjoy, 
like a lot of the stuff, like the kills are great in the movie, like, especially the scene where Arthur Clown sees Santa Claus and he's like, oh, Santa Claus, like you know, and he just like lights up, and then of course he just murders Santa in a gruesome way. But like it's still a fun scene, especially, and I I do like that you know like at the beginning how Arthur Clown it does have like after the in the second movie he just like basically sleeps hibernates for five years. I like that you sit there in a chair and hibernates for five years. I like that we see that he's just like I'm done. I got to tap out for five years. You know, I like that. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to keep doing this, you know. And I thought that was interesting. And I also like that, you know, um, you know, that there is like, you know, the brother. I thought he was great how he, I just felt like he had a smaller role in this one. But I do like the scenes he's in, like how he's just trying to cope with like, oh, like, you know, like it feels almost like Scream 2 to me in a way. Where it's like he's in college trying to just like move on past his life. He's like, you know, he takes medicine. And he's like, oh, it never happened. All that blah, 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 you know, and stuff. And. And then, they, like, when they get cornered for the True Crime podcast and the sister just snaps him, I thought, I love that. I thought that was great. Like, it felt so much like Scream 2 to me, and I loved it. And then, of course, you know, and then when the third act where they have no choice but to face it, especially I like when she has a, she keeps having panic attacks because she's a victim of, you know, what happened. And it just, it, and she hears the Clown Cafe song where Art passes by her and waves at her. That, I thought that was great, too, and everything. And, yeah, the third act, I will say I had issues with it. I love the third act with the rats and everything. But I had issues. My biggest issue was I felt like Art was more of a secondary character in the third act than he was like the main thing. I felt like he was more of a henchman to the witch, you know, and that, that I thought that was just really a bum me out because I'm like Art just sits there like obeying her like, yes, uh huh. You know, and it really I mean that kind of irked me because I'm like Art is the one that's doing all this. And it felt almost like in How Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 how Michael Myers was a henchman to his ghost mother. It kind of felt like that to me where I'm just like. Look, I understand she is a part, like, Art's master or something. But, like, do we really need this? Because it's just fun when it's just about a clown that's going on a murder rampage. That's when it's fun. But when you start trying to add supernatural elements to it where it's like, oh, like, like she, oh, she has a master witch and all this stuff and it's connected to this magic sword and all that stuff, then I'm like, it loses me because I'm like, okay, you're trying to build a giant lore that you don't need to because it just needs to be fun where it's just a clown that wants to murder people. That's all we want. We don't need to have, make it sophisticated, and we don't need to have it, like, preachy. We don't need to have it, like, you know, oh, extraordinarily written. It just needs to be like, hey, a simple movie about a clown that just wants to kill people in, in creative ways and let him get killed at the end. I mean, that's really, really what we want. I mean, it's kind of like a Friday 13th movie where it's like, we just want Jason in a hockey mask killing camp counselors in interesting ways and then kill him at the end. That's it. You know what I mean? I just feel like that's my only issue with it, especially. But I do. There was a great chainsaw fight scene with her at the end and everything, and I thought that was great. And I did like the rat kill scene. I thought that was pretty cool. I just didn't like, especially when they send the little girl to hell at the end. I didn't like that. I didn't like. Then also kind of irked me because I'm a Christian. And when they put like you know they you know when they put like the you know the the you know what I'm talking about on her head. I thought that was just kind of like, you know, that kind of irked me. Which, look, I am not, I'm, I'm not complaining about, like, you know, I know people say, well, why are you watching this if you don't like, look, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with, like, you know, I, I, look, I like, there are some movies I like, I like Rob Zombie movies, even though I, they have some shit like that in there, and that just irked, I was a little tiny irk, nitpick, it wasn't like something big, but I was like, that kind of bothered me a little bit, and also, I just felt like it ends on, like a, like a unconclusive ending where it's like Empire Strikes Back, where it's like, and instead of, like, in a good way, it is ends where it's like, I hope they're not going to hell in the next one, because that's going to be dumb. I feel like it's going to be, because they're on a cheaper budget, I feel like it's more going to be, like, kind of like in the Chucky series, series situation, where it's going to be him terrorizing a new people, and she's probably going to be hunting him. You know, I'm sure that's what their direction are going to be. I'm, I'd be shocked if it's, like, she actually goes to hell. I mean, that would be kind of dumb if you think about it, but, like, still. I'm excited for the next one. I can't wait for it. I'm sure in two years... I can't wait to review that one. Um, if I had to give this movie a score, I would give it a solid A. Thank you so much. Went to the best Christmas ever, filled with fun, smiles, and laughter.